Good morning. I'm friends, developers, members of the Eclipse Foundation. I'm not here to celebrate open source. And despite the quote, you have anticipated, I'm not even here to bury it. Actually, before, when we were preparing, uh, Gail just told me that somebody predicted the death, imminent death of open source. Uh, I think the news of uh, the imminent death of uh, open source is largely exaggerated. I don't think. Actually, open source is doing quite well. Uh, Gail also already presented me. My name is Carlo Piana, chairperson, no, right? person of the Open Source Initiative. I'm also a contributing member to the Eclipse Foundation and I'm uh, in the um, working group and the uh, steering committee of the working group, uh, the Eclipse or Nero working group. I'm, I'm also a lawyer, yes, I confess. I confess, he, he, he threatened me to expose my lawyership. So how is open source doing? Uh, I've been in this business for, I mean, the lawyer business more than that, but in open source for more than 20 years. And I've went through all the parables. Before, and I confess I was one of them, everybody was saying, oh, what, what, is, what is it, this free software, this open source, how can people make this valuable thing and give it, it for free? That's insane. That's all, it must be for something irrelevant, something stupid, not the real thing. The real thing are these things. And then I see the uptake. I was involved at the time. I was convinced that Tensor was a good idea, but it started growing and everybody would say, oh yes, but uh, it, it's not going to last. There is this new development, this new paradigm, and that will make software irrelevant, that will be make open source irrelevant. Uh, that went on and on and on and on. And at uh, each time, that was a refrain. It's going to die. This is not going to happen. Many paradigms have arrived to the scene. Um, actually, uh, I would say that it's uh, open source is 25 years young, but act actually it's more than that. I was born in 68. And actually, software, modern software was, was born one year later. So when C was uh, released, it was 1969. So it's more than 50 years. And open source was started with that. And actually, open source was ante literam before we even came up with the name and the definition. And from that, the paradigm has shifted many, many times from mainframe to personal computer. So everybody could have a computer in the home, then of course, network, internet, the cloud, and of course, the buzzword of the, of the year, because uh, last year, uh, about this time, ChatGPT started, uh, started working, but no new paradigm sh uh, replaces the, with the one before. Everything adds up, so the challenges are still the old one and the new ones. And that's quite interesting. So never like today, software is for, 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 for once is in, is in the device, not just in the internet, in the device. And software is, is going to many devices where it w would never have been before. And this is thanks to open source, by the way. So it's in washing machines, it's in uh, doorbells, in places that Nobody thought it could ever go. Internet of Things. Internet of Things is uh, made by, an, and it's possible only because there is open source. So saying that it's going to, going to last just because uh, it doesn't fit well in, uh, in AI, supposedly so, that's, I think, not true. Oh, this is not good. Okay. But, of course, we have threats. Uh, it's not a bed of roses. There are things that threaten 
uh, open source and software in general, because open source is a, is, is a fundamental pillar of all the software industry. Never forget that. I, uh, there are many threats, I on only quote three. The first threat, and I, I mean it because I've seen it from the inside. I was first at Free Software Foundation Europe, now I'm um, open source initiative, and I see a lot of infights. And this is totally unfortunate. We have to push everything, everybody should push in the same direction, but there are people who are, li not literally, but very figuratively backstabbing. So it's good that many organizations fight or compete for the same resources, donations, mind share, whatever. And it's good, or well, competition is good. Trying to get more means that others will probably get less, and that's a pro uh, entirely appropriate. Well, what is not appropriate is that to try and get this by backstabbing people. And there are lots of people out there saying they are friends, but they are not friends. So beware. If I have one mission in my chairship, is that a word? Is to contribute to lower the level of invites in the open source world. So to speak, we, <laughs> we are small, we are neutral, and we are like Switzerland. We want to be the Switzerland of open source. To help, and I want to be, by character, by inclination, I want to help people to get together and to expel and, and to, uh, uh, to expose and expel those who don't by calling by name if necessary. And this is a case, there's a second threat, this is a case of backstabbing, because there are people polluting the pool where we are swimming. People say, oh, yes, you are so strict, uh, you want to this the open source definition, it's a, well, but open source is much more than that, it, this is just the one part of the story. No, no. Uh, this is called open washing, uh, calling open something which open is not. So, um, yes, the open source definition might need some tweaking, but never forget the open source is just a means to an end, and the end is for freedom. So if you gauge openness by the freedom, you don't even need the open source definition. The open source definition is a tool, and as a tool it can be imperfect. It can not be adapted to the new era, but still it's a gauge. And you don't, mis don't, don't mistake the definition to the concept, okay? So, uh, maybe the open source uh, definition will can become uh, ineffective in, your, in AI, for instance, but if you take the freedoms as you guide in light, then you cannot ma make mistake. And if you get freedom, you say, Oh, those, those, those who say that open source definition is, uh, is just one part of the story, but industry is in another place, don't believe that. Because the freedoms is what make a permissionless, frictionless environment. And this is what makes open source so good. This is what makes open source so effective. Not just because it's good with capital G in form and geological, that's somebody who thinks, I am one who thinks like that, but it works. It works because it allows this and competition. It allows creating very nice, very good things, incredibly important things and competition. So com companies have finally realized that. Oh, that should be, okay. I, I may have had a little bit more. Uh, so uh, in this, what is the role of OSI? Uh, I think I think I've missed some fun people. No, okay. So they're all, they're all open site, open open source initiative. Uh, actually, there is one missing piece. I, I'm pretty sure. No. All right. The role of OSI. Uh, we are uh, a non-profit. We have a non-profit status uh, in US. It's a corporation. We cannot do lobbying. And. Uh, but we can uh, educate, and we can educate people. Uh, why this? Because in the slide you're not seeing, because someone somehow disappeared, there's uh, the third threat. 
The third threat is lack of knowledge, misinformation. Um, people, um, uh, people don't know the importance of open source still today. You are exposed to open source. You know how good is it, how important it is. But out there, and with the people that count, the people who decide of our future, open source is just a, no, a non-thing. They don't know the importance, not just for software, but for the entire economy. And we had a, an example of this. And, and Mike yesterday was, uh, and actually I, I wanted to, to steal a, 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 a slide from you, but some, somehow <laughs> that, that got messed up. Uh, the, 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 the problem you pointed out, which is the Cyber Resilience Act and the lack of knowledge and the lack, the lack of care, it's not that they me meant ill, they meant to do a good thing, but simply they ignored that open source was uh, hit by the decision, by including software and, and not making a special exception for open source. Because nobody told them how important uh, the open source is, how uh, open source works, and what are the requirements of open source. Because as my friend Simon Phipps says, at the commission, in other places, there are people whispering to their ears, and there are these whispers are self-serving. We need to reach out. We need to talk to these people. We need to be the whisperers. But we don't need to whisper. We must shout. We must be ourselves heard. Because if we are not for ourselves, who is for us? So we need to reach out and, and get together and uh, this is something the uh, uh, open source initiative is starting to do. It's the Open Policy Alliance, which is a, a forum for by, by now. It's, 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 uh, it's just in its infancy. It's a place to have all the, the actors, all the powerful, powerful voices of open source to sit and to coordinate, avoid to stepping in on each other's toes, avoiding uh, sending conflicting messages. And CRA, unfortunately, is, a, is, a, a, uh, is a, a case where messages have been confusing. And if one says, oh, A, and the other says B, probably people would believe neither. So it's important that we start, sit together and, and work together. And by the way, at OSI, not, we don't do also only this, we do also very nice discounts. So, to make a long story short, uh, my prediction for the future. So, first, if you don't know the history, you are doomed to repeat its mistakes. So, first thing we know where we must know where we have, we come from, where we are, and we can predict for the future. My personal prediction, and I've bet an entire career. As I said, I'm a lawyer, and when sta I started doing a, a profession as a, a, an open source consultant, they say, oh, oh, no, no, there is no money in there. You, you, should, you shouldn't be using that. Now this has uh, turned out to be uh, not exactly uh, true. Uh, actually, I'm not rich, but uh, I'm doing, um, and we are making, because my and my friend Alberto were doing quite great. So, uh, and so uh, I take pride in having seen the future and the future look good for open source. And s since I am an optimist, I still believe there is a lot of uh, a lot to, to do for uh, for open source. Another slide that has some somehow disappeared. I blame Macintosh because I'm not using Macintosh for that, but probably I made some mistake. Uh, another slide was saying that we are act today we are working not not sorry not today before the buzzword erupted that oh, AI was uh, so game changing we started working on AI we started uh, with this, uh, what we call a deep dive into AI which was a tremendous success and it was very interesting and it raised a lot of interest and also quite a big 
new uh, sponsors. That's glad. Uh, we are glad for, for, for that. But we are also, so we, we, we try to cover the, 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 the space uh, uh, from the beginning. And the other thing, we are now, and we invite all who are uh, interested to, uh, we are uh, r collecting consensus to create a new definition of open source AI. Because you say, the, there are people saying that open source is entirely not up, uh, up to the game for, uh, for AI, but we want to disprove them once again, and we want to be right once again. So uh, it's a public effort. It's not by invitation. You can invite yourself. It's public. Uh, I don't have the, 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 the links, but uh, there's a, the, the, the effort is currently going on. We probably come up with something like the open source definition for open AI. So for having, so having, for having something which is predictable, explainable, uh, whatever. If we don't do it, if the industry will not take care, politicians, governments will take care, public opinion will take care, because this is, uh, this is uh, the, the time where we are defining the future. Future. Um, I think open source, maybe not as we know it, but in the same, uh, with the same characteristics, like uh, fostering freedom, fostering uh, freedom for people, is going to stay, and it's going to stay for at least for when uh, software uh, is is going to stay. And I think there's there is no no sudden no no imminent end to it. So uh, I predict that in next 25 years we can get together and celebrate another 25 year of of open source success. Uh, as I said, I'm not an optimist, but I'm a rational optimism. I see the, the past, I see the current times, and I see the future somehow. And uh, if you don't believe me, well, let's meet again in 25 years. And uh, uh, hopefully we are all here in good shape. I'm, I'm 50, and so for the, uh, I will not be here. But as I'm an optimist, and I hope to be here again and be friends and be still friends to uh, his foundation, not as a president of Open Source Initiative. That's that's go not going to last much because we have only two terms to, to be a member. And with that, I wish you a very successful, interesting, and pleasant uh, rest of the day. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>